Hello everyone. I'm Dr. Ala Musbah, professor of obstetrics and gynecology, faculty of medicine, Mansoura University. Today I wanted to discuss with you third stage of labor. So we wanted to discuss today the definition, third stage, the active management, the conservative management, care of the new poor, characteristic of normal placenta, and Cochrane Review conclusion published in 2019. Third stage of labor referred to the period that start immediately after delivery of the infant and the end with the complete delivery of the placenta and its attached membranes. The duration usually lasts between 5 to 15 minutes. In absence of postpartum hemorrhage, a maximum delay of 30 minutes is tolerated for the expulsion of the placenta. After 30 minutes, we said this is a case of retained placenta and should be re-evaluated for the cause. There is a significant risk of hemorrhage during this stage, that's why it is very important. The blood loss accompanying delivery of the placenta shouldn't exceed 500 milliliters. Okay, what about the physiological placental separation? We have two mechanisms. Schultz mechanism, which is a very common, more than 80% of cases, and Duncan method. In this picture, this is Schultz method. Separation of the placenta occur at the center. And the placenta is delivered like inverted umbrella, as you see in the picture. Here and here in this picture, like inverted umbrella, because separation occur at the center. And uh, in this mechanism, it is less in incidence of occurrence of hemorrhage and the retained remnants of the placenta. A while, Duncan method separation occur at the edges. So separation occur at the edge and the proceed on so more liable for retained parts of the placenta and the more liable for more bleeding Trolltus is much better than Duncan mechanism because it is less bleeding and less occurrence of remnants of placenta okay let us go to the management active management and the conservative management. What about the active management of third stage of labor? We should give administ uh, oxytocin after delivery of the anterior shoulder, five or 10 international unit oxytocin, slowly intravenous or intramuscular. Oxytocin is the best choice for uterotonic drugs. Ergometrin may be given 0.5 milligram or 0.2 milligram slowly intravenous or intramuscular but there is risk for hypertension so it is contraindicated in hypertensive lady clamping of the cord early after giving the uterine tonic controlled cord traction What's called planned Andrews maneuver is done during contraction with counter pressure to the uterus with hand placed on the abdomen, as you see in the picture here. If the placenta is separated, the cord is found to elongate and the gush of blood occurs, and to all signs of separation of placenta. So, please remember the controlled cord traction, which means two important items. The first you should do the core detraction only during contraction of the uterus, okay? The second is you are doing gentle core traction while the other abdominal hand pushing the uterus up. So both items should be present in controlled core traction, as in this picture also. 
When the placenta appears at the vulva, hold it between two hands and roll it so as to make a rope of membranes in order to avoid missing part of membranes. Inspect the placenta and the membranes to be sure that it is complete, as in the picture here. If fragment is missing, manually removed under anesthesia. This is the cotyledons, this is the maternal surface of the placenta, and this is the cotyledons. Any missing cotyledon, we should get it out under anesthesia. Uterine massage to help retraction of the uterus. Inspect external genitalia and the perineum for any illustration that should be repaired. Wash the area with antiseptic solution, dry and pot sterile bed. What about the expectant or conservative management? After the infant is delivered, there is a rest period without contraction and that lasts on average 10 minutes or less. Use this time to take care of the new need. Watch the mother carefully for the vital signs and the four signs of postpartum hemorrhage which can occur at any time. Then, contractions resume. The placenta separates spontaneously. Palpate the abdomen and then notice the signs of placental separation and the descent. Hold and inspect the placenta and the membrane for any missing parts. Give oxytocin slowly intravenous or intramuscular 5 to 10 international units at the end after delivery of the placenta if needed. So what is the signs of placental separation and descent? Gush of blood from the vagina Lengthening of the core, uterine body becomes smaller, harder, and globular. Suprapubic bulge due to presence of the placenta and the lower uterine segment. Slight rise of level of contracted fundus at the upper segment, as the upper segment overrides the lower segment, which is now distended by the placenta. There is a test for elongation of the core. You do suprapubic pressure, then lengthening of the cord happens. If you release the pressure, if there is separation, there is no recede to the cord into the vagin again. So you can use this test to be sure that the placenta is separated. So all these are signs of placental separation. Let us have this comparison. Conservative versus active management. According to the different items here, uterotonic drugs, none in conservative or can be given after delivery of the placenta. In active management, after delivery of the anterior shoulder of the baby. As regard the uterus, evaluation of the uterus, assessment of the size and the tone in both conservative and active management. As regards the core declamping, variable in time, maybe after three minutes, maybe after stoppage of the pulsation of the umbilical core. But in active management, it is done early. Core detraction is not done in conservative management, but it is done in active management and it is called controlled core detraction, which must be done during the uterine contraction and with abdominal hand pushing the uterus up. Care of the newborn include put the infant with the head lower to drain the respiratory passage and aspirate the mucus in the mouth when needed and in the throat by mucus castor. Umbilical cord clamp about five centimeters from the umbilicus to avoid Avoid the possibility of tying umbilical hernia and the injury to any intestine in the hernia. Then inspect for bleeding, paint with alcohol and apply antiseptic powder.
put penicillin or any safe antibiotic eye drops to avoid ophthalmia unitorum. What is the characteristic of normal placenta and the umbilical cord? The usual term placenta is about 22 centimeter in diameter and the 2.5 centimeter thick. It generally weights approximately 500 grams. The maternal surface of the placenta should be dark maroon in color and should be divided into lobules or cotyledons. The fetal surface of the placenta should be shiny gray and translucent, as in the picture here. This is one of my cases. At term, the typical umbilical cord is 60 cm in length with a diameter of 2.5 cm. The structure should have abundant wart and jelly and no true nodes or thromboses. The umbilical cord typically contains two arteries and single vein. Lastly, Cochrane review on more than 8,000 women in different centers all over the world and released their conclusion in 2019. Active management reduce the risk of severe primary postpartum hemorrhage greater than 1,000 milli at time of birth, but we are uncertain of this finding because of the very low quality evidence. Active management may reduce the incidence of maternal anemia amoglobin less than 9 gram per deciliter following the birth, but harms such as postnatal hypertension, pain, and the return to hospital due to bleeding were identified. In women at low risk of excessive bleeding, it is uncertain whether there was a difference between active and expectant management for severe postpartum hemorrhage or maternal hemoglobin less than 9 gram per deciliter. So, they concluded also that there is individual variation in decision whether to use active or conservative management. Also, you should counsel your patient about the options of conservative or active management and later on study may explore more results about which is more better to do as regard the active management and the conservative management. Thank you. I'm Dr. Alam Musbah, Professor of Obstetrics and Gynecology, Faculty of Medicine, Mansoura University.